Hello, hello, happy Saturday, happy Sabbath. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm like super, super happy on the day. Uh, I'm constantly feeling different shifts. First and foremost, I'm Pastor Kurt. Welcome to Love You For Life Ministries Saturday Night Prayer. Um, I'm feeling super excited, extra happy because um, I'm constantly seeing shifts. I'm constantly seeing um, changes. I'm constantly seeing glory to glory to glory. And what I mean by that is our Saturday night prayer is live now on our on the way it should be. At. And uh, what I mean by that, we started over a little bit over a year ago with our Saturday night prayer. Uh, started off at um, Unique Presents. Started off on that. And then we graduated to Curtis B. Nugent Senior page, and now we're graduated to Love You for Life page. So this is home. This is where it should be. I'm happy to be coming live here. Uh, and so first and foremost, let me say thank you to all my Love You for Life partners. Thank you for all my fellow co-laborers uh, for as far as kingdom business, kingdom citizens. So I thank you guys. Thank you guys for joining in, you know, from my page to our ministry page. Um, so thank you. Thank you for everybody that's joining in on tonight. We have a really, really awesome topic. Um, just thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Um, thank you for taking time. And I, I promise you, I won't waste your time. Um, we're going to utilize this time and elevate our lives. Why? Because for a lot of us, right, we cannot waste another second. A lot of us, we cannot waste another moment. A lot of us don't have the energy. A lot of us, if it's that one more thing, right? Have you ever experienced that? If one more thing, I mean, a lot of us don't have that one more thing in us. A lot of us got to get it right. We got to get it right now. We got to get this thing fixed. We got to live our best life. We ain't finna waste no time with no anybody, no everybody, but that right body. And um, so I, I thank you once again. Thank you once again. Uh, side chick. Side chick, side chick. And once again, uh, this is a pandemic. Uh, early on, right, um, throughout this week, um, leading and preparing to this very moment that we're in right now, I'm like, all right, God, what, what you want me to speak about? Because I'm a firm believer. Follow the spirit. You know, follow the spirit of what God is saying in this season. So I'm like, all right, God, what you want, what you want? And I kept hearing pandemic, pandemic, pandemic. I don't know if it's because it's what's happening right now. I don't know if it was just because of the world news, you know, just hearing people talk about the reality of life constantly. But I kept hearing pandemic. And then as this week progressed, really leading to Wednesday, that's when everything made plain. Before our Bible study this past Wednesday, that's when it became plain. And talk about side chick. Why? Because that is a pandemic. Why? Because there's a lot of broken homes. Why? Because there's a lot of people um, not giving a they, they value of themselves. At the end of the day, that's what it is, right? The value of themselves. And uh, like I said, broken homes. I mean, I mean, everybody in disarray. And this is a pandemic of a lifetime. It's been here. It, it's always been here. And truth be told, it may continue because some people don't want to change. Some people, it's just the way of life, right? But, but my assignment on the night is to do a little teaching. To do a little teaching and, and make stuff make sense. Why? Because we all got to cross the bear and we all are at a place of elevation. We all are at a place of elevation. And I thank God for this platform. I thank God for this ministry platform because I, me personally, I never heard no ministry talk about no sad chick. <laughs> you know what I mean? So for this alone, I feel honored. I feel honored to even to be bold enough, to be brave enough, to be conscious enough to hit uh, the reality of life. And I believe I do have a moral obligation to speak truth. I have a moral obligation to speak in somebody's house. I have a moral obligation to, 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 to know what I know what's going on and have dealt with the things I done dealt with and I know I have to speak about it. I know I have to speak about it and more than anything, I gotta give understanding. So even with that being said, I wanna tell a little story. Like I said, um, I'm in teaching mode right now. I'm in teaching mode, so bear with me. I got a story to share within the Bible. Within the Bible, when it comes to the Samaritan woman uh, and she met Jesus at the well, I'm giving this as a background because after I share this, this small story, I'm going to break down these sad chicks. I'm going to break down the mentality of sad chicks. 
I'm going to break down the, the, the way of life of sad, sad chick, how, how sad chicks got here. And uh, when it comes to the, the, the mentality, the thoughts, the actions, the ways, the walk, uh, whatever the case may be, that's my goal. That's my goal. But first, I got to do this justice. I got to teach a little bit and I, I got to give a little background. So I don't know and I, I don't want to just assume everybody know this story because the truth be told, some people don't know this story. So I'm going to give a little background. It's three, it's three main parties in this story. Three main parties. You got the, um, the, Rome, the Romans, you got the Jews, and you got the Samaritans. Say it again. You got the Romans, you got the Jews, and you got the Samaritans. And to even make that make sense, right, let's bring this into 2020. Let's bring this into 2020. So when it comes to the Romans, right, if you think about the Romans, let's just think about the system. The system as a whole, you can paint a picture as a government, but I just want to paint a picture of the system because it's a system behind all of this. And when I mean system, these are spirits. These are things that's governing us. I mean, the law of the land, all these different things. It's a system. Let's talk about the Jews. When I think about the Jews, I think about the church. And when I say the church, I'm talking about the, 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 the religious church, the church that ain't going to miss a Sunday. The, 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 the church folks that's sitting extra high and they not dealing with a lot of natural and, and practical things. I mean, the type of church that's just going to walk on back. A lot of church that's just going to back past so many um, devastating issues in life. I'm talking about these this type of church. I ain't talking about all churches, but I'm talking about that type particular church. Now, let's talk about the Samaritans, the streets. The streets, not saying they're not a part of the church because we all are part of the kingdom if you have given yourself over to Christ, you know. But uh, you have the streets that loves God, that, that yearns for God, but they have not had the chance or the the, the wake-up call, so to speak, or the connection, or, or even just the aha. Because a lot of us got to have that aha type moment. So, once again, I'm painting three Three pictures, I mean, one picture, but three different access of this picture. Once again, you got the system, and I bring up the system because this is a worldly system that we're living in. And when I say worldly, like sad chick, right, that, that's just a, a household name now. That's just a, a terminology where it's okay. It, it's, for some people, it's a badge of honor. I mean, that's how the system um run things that's how the system operate because we got to remember when it comes to the um the, the system when it comes to the kingdom of the devil he got his stuff operating to a degree where wrong is right and right is wrong and then we grow up with this mentality right a lot of young ladies grow up with this young uh mentality and even with that right i'm not just focusing on women i'm focusing on on men as well even though a man ain't labeled a sad chick they can be called a dip they can be called a sugar daddy. They can be called a lot of different things. But it, it's all parallel. It, it's all cohesive with, with one another. But just for the name's sake, sad chick. Just for the name's sake. So, uh, like I said, you, you got these really two, two different facets right here. You got the, the Jews and the Samaritans. And then even though they don't speak much about the, the Rome in this particular scripture, you got to understand it's the system behind it. It's a it's a whole a whole system behind it. So even with the story, right? The story of the well. You had Jesus was doing his work. He was doing his assignment. I mean, he's his ministry constantly building up. I mean, things is really going well. So now he's on his way to another assignment, but he had to stop in Samaria. And if we think of Samaria, and once again, I gave them them breakdowns for a reason, with the especially with the Jews and the Samaritans. He had to stop in in, in Samaria, Samaritan. And, and if you think about Samaritan, Samaria, the Jews hated Samaria. The Jews hated Samaria with a passion. They looked at them as dogs. They looked at them as disgust. They looked at them as nobody. They looked at the Samarians as unworthy. And you got uh, not only Jesus, but just a Jew in general stopping in Samaria. And you got his disciples like, hold on, what? Uh -uh. We, don't, we don't do that around here. But he had to stop there. 
And I, I once again, I gave them analogies just a moment ago with the, the church and the streets because you got a lot of Jews that act like church folk don't want to deal with the Samaritans, which is the street folks, even though they all the same people. If we really dig deep into this thing, right? A, Samar a, a Samarian is a Jew. It is a Jew. They come, they, they worship the same God. They, they come from the same bloodline, but they have different practices. Think about that, right? Church in the streets. If, you know, and I mean streets, I mean streets, those that love God, those that, that don't have a taste for church or those that got hurt by the church or those that got hurt by, by religious folks or, or whatever folks. And now they, they can't adapt to, to, to the church or, or those that never got introduced to the church and those that when they did get introduced to the church, it was all negative things. So they really don't have the capacity to really comprehend the goodness of the church. And like I said, I'm not knocking church, but I have seen for so long that the streets have a bad taste of the church. And, and I think about it, right? I always hear people say, I love God, but I, I know I'm going to church, but I love God. And I tell people, stop saying that around me. Oh, no, you ain't got to say that around me. You ain't got to prove yourself to love God because you don't go to church. And this is how the Samaritans was, right? That's how the Jews treated the Samaritans. Like, nah, you beneath us. You below us. You don't got our same practices. You ain't got our same ways. Even though, y'all, we got the same father. We got the same entitlement, so to speak. You're beneath us. So, but Jesus had to go. Jesus had to go to Samaria. Like myself, right? I gotta hit these type of topics. I gotta hit the streets. I gotta get this. Um, I gotta talk to the streets. Why? Because I gotta go in this direction. But Jesus had to go to the uh, to Samaria, right? And when he got there, he said, "I thirst." He was there chilling, waiting, like he always do. He be waiting on us. I love God because he waiting. And then he he got there around noonish, around twelve. And then once he got there, he he the young lady came and. They sparked up a small conversation, and Jesus said, I thirst. And the first thing the young lady told him, yeah, but we don't associate with each other. You know, she didn't know who he was at that particular time, but she knew that he was a Jew, and she knew that she was out of his class, at least she thought, right? And then she was like, um, we don't, y'all don't deal with us. I mean, we, we don't. Y'all, one, y'all don't really come through this town. And two, y'all definitely don't talk to us. And three, y'all definitely don't ask for anything from us. So God was like, you know what? If this was on the other foot around, if you, if you ask the type of man that I am, if you're thirsty, I will give without question. This is God. And she don't know who God is at this time, right? But he's telling her, if you ask me the same questions that you thirst, not only I will give, I will give without question. And at that moment, she knew that she was encountering something great. At that moment, she knew she was encountering not just no anybody. At this, new, at this moment, she knew that she had a date with destiny. So I'm just going to pause for a quick second. I don't know if anybody knows, but you have a date with destiny. I don't know if anybody knows, but at this, at this moment in time, you are encountering something special. You are encountering our Lord, our Savior, our, 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 our Father. You are encountering all of Him in the Holy Spirit. If you're here on this lab tonight and you're taking your time tonight and you're taking heed on tonight and if you have a thirst on tonight, Get ready for your encounter. So God is telling, I mean, Jesus is telling her, oh, you know what? You know, if, if, you know, this, I would not, I, I would not ask. I would not ask. I just give. And then she was like, you know what? This is something special going on on today. And let me pay attention. So now they, they, um, they're talking, right? They're talking. And she was like, I, I thirst too. She was like, I thirst too. You know, I want some of this, this spiritual stuff. They, they conversating, right? They, they vibing back and forth. They're communicating. They building a relationship. Just meeting each other. But they're building a relationship. So she like, you know what? I don't want to thirst no more. I don't want to thirst no more. What you saying, I, I, I'm feeling what you saying. And I don't want to thirst no more. So Jesus like, you know what? Go on ahead, get your husband. And go ahead and bring them back and we can all we can all talk together. 
And she was like, you know what? I ain't got no husband. I love this part, right? She like, I ain't got no husband. And he like, you, I already know, but you did have five husbands. You had five of them. And, and key word, past tense, you had five of them. And a man that you got, and a husband you got now is not yours. Side chick, sidebar. And the husband you got is not yours. So just think about it, right? And like I said, we don't know much about this woman. Uh, but we know that she been in a lot of relationships. She had like five different husbands. And a, a man that she with right now is a husband, but not her husband. And that, that lets me know. To, to like common sense, right? Sometimes when we hear these stories about God and we read these stories about God, we got to implement some common sense with these stories. We got to make it relatable to these stories the way we know how. By, why? How? Off experience. A lot of us can relate to scripture off experience. So that lets me know that she ain't been the best in relationships or she got rejected in relationships or she was abused in relationships. But whatever the case may be, she was in quite a few relationships. And now she's at a point in another relationship, but it ain't her man. I wonder how many of us are in relationships right now in this season of life, but it ain't our woman or it ain't our man because they attached to somebody else. They married to somebody else. They engaged to somebody else. They 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 been spending two, three years with somebody else, and now we creep in, or we got in, or we live it in. So my goal on tonight is to make sense of the sad chick. My goal tonight is to make sense of, of how we got here, why we got here, and why we still here. In case in point, I know this ain't gonna change everybody. I know this, this might don't gravitate to everybody, but I do decree and declare somebody going to get it. I do decree and declare somebody going to end up looking into the mirror. But just to go ahead to conclude this story, and I want to get into some, um, to some, to some points. But at the end, basically, sum everything up, right? God is telling her, you know what? I, I, I know that you being a Samaritan woman, Y'all have some different practices. Y'all have some different ways. And, and I know us as Jews have different practices and have different ways. But it's a time where everything's about to become one. It's the time. And the time is now. Uh, it's time to worship in spirit and in truth. The time is now that the separation is going to stop and, and the bridging is going to come together. And we're going to operate in spirit and in truth. Why? Because that's the only way to, to please the Father. So I'm here to tell somebody on the day. The time for, for playing church is over. The time for operating in a, in, a, in a norm is over. The time of these religious ways is over. The, 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 the time of, of just doing things off just traditional without no even second thought of what you're doing and having no connection them days is over why because who gonna serve god and if that's you you have to serve god in spirit and in truth there's no other way around it. if we if we don't do that right how are we going to have effective ministry and how are we going to be able to 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 help this pandemic when it comes to these households when it comes to that that your husband you know, sneaking off at night or, or lying about where he at. Or, or when it comes to your, your wife, you know, uh, saying that she over her buddy house, but she's really over her buddy house, you know what I mean? Her buddy buddy house. It's time to stop playing games and act like this ain't happening in the church. Because guess what? I seen a lot of sad chicks at church. I seen it with my own two eyes. I am a witness of what I done seen. And let me say this. Let me say this, and even like some, some females, right, some females and some guys, they don't even know that um, that person that they're with is with somebody else. So this conversation ain't for you right here. It is for you, but it ain't for you because you don't know. But I want to really zoom in for those that knows. For those that knows that the person you with is with somebody else. All that being said, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And like I said, that, that story is important. 
that story is important. Why? Because first, Jesus had to go through Samaria. He had to go there. He had to meet this lady. He had to ha make sure she had an experience. It was a must. It was a must. See, what Jesus was doing at that moment, he was planting a seed. Because as, as, as soon as he got through talking, she she's run, ran through her town like, hold on. The, 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 the Savior is here. The real deal is here. So certain things that we got to do, even if it's hard conversations, certain things we got to experience, even if it's hard conversation, we got to shame the devil and tell the truth. Why? Because how are we going to worship God in spirit and in truth? We ain't no other way around it. Okay, but this whole sad chick thing, this is, it's three things. Well, I want to break them down one by one by one. All right, when it comes to the whole mentality, right, with a sad chick, one thing I come to understand and I come to learn, some people just don't care. That's it, that's all. Let's, let's, that's the first one because that's really the easiest way. Some, some folks just don't care once again some folks look at this as an honor i mean if you look at our society now i mean especially with these young ladies they proud themselves of having this man that's somebody else man these guys out here i mean a lot a lot of dudes out here pride themselves for, ha for having another another man's wife it's bragging rights in these streets nowadays it's and, for the, for the church people that don't talk about it, it it's, it's, it's a guilty pleasure. It's a guilty pleasure for the church folk. But for the street folks, it's a bragging white right. And it all equal destruction. But we'll, we'll get more in that in, in a little bit later. But a lot of them don't care. And then I, 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 I ask myself, I, I, I look back into my life. I, 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 I go through other people's lives that share stories with me, things of that nature. And it's a lot that can, uh, it's, it can be a lot of reasons how a person end up not caring. For one, they probably lost all trust in, 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 in a guy, for a woman, right? A woman. A woman can lose all trust in, in relationships to a point where they don't want a serious relationship no more. They rather, they rather just work on their career, handle their business, take care of their kids, and then just have fun on the side. A lot of them is cool with it. A lot of guys, right? A lot of guys don't ain't trying to be settled down. They they rather just you know go play and get how many girls they can possibly get and just and then after the longest they ain't gotta take care of the woman, right? And you got a lot of guys out here so lazy it ain't even funny. A lot of guys don't want to be in a relationship just so they don't have the responsibility of a relationship. They rather play all day and then play all night. With no real commitment. And it leaves a uncaring generation. And then when you have the system, when you have the system of uh, uh you know approving it, saying, okay, this is what you do is normal. We're gonna produce all type of sad chick songs to glorify it. We're gonna produce all type of sad chicks movies to glorify it. One to scramble our brains up, and then two to feed us subconsciously. To continue to not care. A lot of people got abused. A lot of females. A lot, a lot, a lot of females. And my heart goes out to you females that got abused, that being victimized to a place. I mean, got a, a victimized with a body. You probably got pimped. You probably got played. I mean, you, you probably got molested. Whatever the case may be. And now you at a place where your, your, your love tank ain't, ain't quite there. So you take any man just to have a man when it's time to, 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 to enjoy a man. But you ain't looking for nothing else. Because the capacity of, of where you are able to love and give and to receive healthy, it leaves us at a place. It leaves us at a place of really not caring. These are a few things that I noticed. So I, 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 I ask you. Are you at that place for those that's dealing with issues like that? <laughs> for those that are in relationships with not just, you know, not just him, but also probably with her. 
you know, are, are you are you in a relationship where where yeah, I got this man and I know that she he, he's her man or for the for the guy, yeah, I got this woman, but he's her woman. How long are you not going to care? And, and and I know we I know we know the consequences, right? I know that we're 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 we're, we're breaking up happy homes or or homes, you know, that could be happy if we gave it a chance. I know there's a lot of unhappy homes out there, but for a lot of us, we're not giving it a chance to work on it, to give it time, to heal, to, 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 to go through the, the, the encounter of the journey the way it should be. And I say the word should be because I feel if you get into it and, are, and you're able to go through it, if you, got to, if you made a commitment and you have the ability to get through it, why don't you stick with it? And I know there's a lot of distractions out here. I know a lot of us done gave it our all. I mean, a lot of us, right? A lot of us gave 110%. But the lady still acting a fool. The man still acting a fool. And then what the enemy do? He bring that, that, that guilty pleasure. <laughs> he bring that thing that we've been yearning for. And now, instead of being a blessing, it's a distraction. Why? Because there's no covenant with it. If there's no covenant with it, it's no blessing with it. Now you got something that's cursed, and now you're cursed with a curse. Versus building a covenant and being blessed with a blessed. And I see that a lot of times in, in, in relationships when, when a man dip out with that other woman, or when a woman dip off with that other man. And, and then, you know, now you, you, you're getting feelings. Now things are getting all wrapped up. Now you're seeing that, that sad chick a little different. Now you want to wipe that sad chick. Or you, or you see that man, and he ain't your man, but now you want to you wanna take that man. But it was all on false pretenses. It was all on false pretenses. Why? Because you, you, you got him off distraction, or you got her off distractions. It was a counterfeit. It wasn't the right season nor the right time. Because if it was, you would not have your spouse. And for a lot of us, right, we don't care. I'm still on that first topic of not caring. A lot of us are in so much of a bad relationship. Instead of getting out the relationship, we'll just go play. Versus being a man or being a woman and, and, and leaving that situation that toxic. Because some, some situations can't be worked out. Some marriages can't be worked out. Some relationships can't be worked out. And I'm not an advocate for, uh, advocate for divorce. I'm going to make that very clear. I do not advocate um, divorce because I feel what God put together, let no man tear apart. But a lot of these relationships, God ain't put together. A lot of these relationships is ourselves. We really, really want that man or we really, really want that woman. So we do anything possible to get that person. And then we do get that person. And now all these other things comes out. And then we five, ten years later, we look back like, how did I get here? How did I get in this situation? And it leads us to a point to stop caring. So now we're dealing with the next person or the next person. And we find ourselves being a sad chick or a dip. And when I say dip, that's like a, a, a street term, I guess. Urban, urban. I'm using the urban term for a sad chick, for a guy. But at the end of the day, a lot of us don't care for a lot of different factors, for a lot of different reasons. But I'm here to tell you, it, it's still a way out. It's a way to get help. It's a way to free yourself. It's a way to break yourself. It's a way to regulate your mind, to uncondition your mind. Because you got to care about something, right? If you don't care about that marriage, what about yourself? A lot of, I, I, I see it, I hear it, I talk to people. A lot of sad chicks, a lot of dips, they can care less about that household that they're, that they're intertwined with now. Or they, or they breaking up now. They can care less. So I encourage somebody, look into the mirror. Or I think about karma, <laughs> Because I'm pretty sure every sad chick don't want to be a sad chick for the rest of their life, no matter how you're feeling in this season. You may say, yeah, I don't want a man, I don't need a man, I don't care about a man. But what about five years later? You might just change your mind. And if you change your mind, don't forget about what you did five years earlier. So I'm, I, I hasten, I hasten a lot of us to just to, to stop, to take time and think. 
about what we're doing and the long lasting effects of what we're doing. Like I said, Jesus had to go to Samaria. He had to go to meet the lady at the well. And when he met the lady at the well, he had to let the lady know. I know you would a man. I know you would. I know you got a husband, but it ain't your husband. See, God knows this, right? He knows this. And I thank God for Jesus. I thank God that he was conscious enough to send a, a, a Godhead, right? That's what I'm going to call Jesus right now, a Godhead. And what I mean by Godhead, a, a person in flesh, a person that we can, we can model ourselves after so we can know the do's and the dopes, the rights and the wrongs. Because once again, the system, the system going to teach us any and everything. Why? Because they don't care. They definitely don't care about God and they don't care about us. So I thank God for that, for that God head. Because God knows. Yeah, you got a husband, but he ain't your husband. Yeah, yeah, you got a wife, but he ain't your wife. So I really encourage somebody to really take heed to that first one. Because a lot of us really don't care. And karma is real. I done seen it happen to quite a few people that finally changed, that finally saw the light of their era, of their ways, of what they used to used to do, and now they don't do no more because they got a change of heart. And just for it to happen to them, not saying it's their fault, not saying it's their fault, but karma is real. Sins do not go unpunished. I don't care who you are. I don't care your title. I don't care your gender, your race. Sin do not go unpunished. So when we don't care, that's, that's when we bluntly say, screw God and screw everything else. We bluntly do that. At least let's have a conscience about what we do. But the second one, the second one when it comes to a sad chick, a lot of us get lonely. If you think you're lonely now, wait until tonight. A lot of us get lonely. And a lot of us kind of just stumble up on, on this whole sad chick thing. A lot of us just stumble up of, of being, once again, I'm using the word dip for a guy. A lot of us just stumble up on these things. Why? Because we get lonely. A lot of us know better. A lot of us want to do better. A lot of us has experienced different things in relationships that we know wasn't right, knowing that not only we hurt ourselves, but we hurt that man and that man's family, or we hurt that woman and that woman's family. A lot of us knows this, and a lot of us have a conscience about this, but a lot of us get lonely. Especially when you ain't got nobody. You want a man, or, or, or you want a woman, and, and, and ain't, no, ain't no good man or woman around. I know a lot of guys right now, a lot of gentlemen, that want a woman, but they want a good woman. They want a wife. I know a lot of females that want a man, but they ain't really trying to deal with no any man when it comes to settling down. They ain't trying to, they ain't trying to just get themselves their time, their energy, and years off their life to don't anybody. So they're waiting, they're praying, they're fasting, but they get lonely. And I'm not using that for no excuse. I'm using it for a natural fact when it comes to this whole sad chick pandemic. A lot of us get so lonely to a point where we start increasing that ego. That's the best way I can describe it right now. And, and think about yourself, right? Or think about somebody you know. Because I'm not saying anybody on here is a sad chick or a dip. But if you are, yes, think about it. If you know, if you're not, okay, cool. But if you know somebody, think about it. Think about their situations. A lot of people don't want to be in these situations. But they get lonely. So what do they normally do? Call up that person that, who they used to mess with. Call up that person that they may trust the most. Or they just do a one night stand. They outside one day and they like, you know what? I'm about to get loosey goosey and whatever happens, happens. Because I've been a good girl all month. Or a guy like I've been a good dude all two weeks. And tonight I'm just going to let the cars fall where they may. And now you, you, you stumble up in a situation. One thing I learned over time, I'm only 42, but 42 years will teach you, will teach you a lot of things. I'm sorry. Will teach you when you're living a good life, when you're living a not so good life, when you're up, when you're down, when you're in end season and out of season, 
Life will teach you no matter if you're, you're 42, 62, 22, or 12. Life will teach you a lesson. And one thing I learned in life, idle time is the devil's playground. Naturally, right? We cannot escape from getting lonely when we yearn, when we yearn to be with somebody. It's no way around. We're going to feel a natural way. You may even have a, a, a whole a whole man, a whole husband, or a whole girlfriend, or a whole wife at home with you, a live-in person with you, and you still lonely. I know a lot of households got a whole relationship, but they're still lonely. And then they go outside. Idle time is the devil playground. And then it usher in that spirit. It usher in that ego. I got to do something that I know I should not do. I got to I got to I got to scratch this itch. I got to feed this flesh. Why cuz it's time. And if I can get a little more realer, right? If I get a little more honest, if I can speak a little more in spirit and in truth. A lot of people take time to please themselves. But even when they please themselves, it still ain't like the touch of that person, of that opposite sex. So it comes a time where a lot of people do self-medicate, so to speak, to please themselves. But it do not feel that urge. Why? Because they get lonely. And if you think about it, it's more than just releasing fluids or coming or, you know, I'm just trying to be as clean as clean can be. But... At the end of the day, if you're really in spirit and in truth, it's more than just releasing these body fluids after sex. It's the touch of that person. Touch. If you're a woman, it's the touch of that man. If you're a man, it's the touch of that woman. It ain't nothing like that touch. It ain't nothing like after that touch, the conversation afterwards. Especially when that conversation, conversation draws meaning. I know a lot of guys cheat for a good conversation. They have sad chicks just to be, to feel like a king that they're not receiving at home. Or at least they say. I know a lot of guys that, 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 that stumble up on, on, a, on a female and start giving females their time and their money and their energy. Why? Because they feel appreciated. But they're not getting it at home. I mean, it's, it's so many different levels. It's so many different, um, so many different um, layers. When it comes to this whole loneliness. And alone, it's, it's a, why? Because it ain't good for men to be alone. It ain't good. And I get it. And so even with all that being said, I encourage. I encourage those that's waiting on a good man. I encourage those that's waiting on a good woman. Be cautious and conscious of your time. Be cautious and conscious that, yes, I know you got that itch, you got that urge, and you're probably about to burst. You probably ain't have a encounter a man in some time or, or that woman in some time, but continue to hold on. And for those that's in relationship, inside chicks' relationship, for those, for those guys that are in a, a dip relationship because you're lonely, where's your God? And not saying that you don't believe in God. But where is your God when, 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 when you get at your worst? Where is your God? Where, where is your, your relationship to, to, to build yourself up when the natural things broke you down? Because anything natural, uh, it, 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 if we're taking away something natural, I encourage somebody to, to fill, it up, fill it up with something spiritually. If you have this itch, and we all have an itch, we all got a yearning, but you got to fill it with something spiritual. Oh, if it ain't spiritual, it got to be something constructive. It got to be something constructive. Why? Because we all get lonely. We all get lonely. But I have noticed that when it comes to uh, why a lot of people are in these sad chicks relationships, the first one they don't care or you might be that person, you just get lonely. So you're going you're gonna to take that person that you trust a little bit or trust just enough. And you're just going to spend time with that person to fulfill your flesh. 
knowing that that person might not hurt you, knowing that that person may keep your secret, y'all secret. But at the end of the day, I believe that we delay our blessings. I do believe it. And I know for a lot of people, y'all been waiting years on top of years. I know some people that's really been waiting years on that man. And you got to a point where now you just get any man. I get it. Because the flesh get weak. But today is the day for an encounter. Today is the day for you to build your spirit back up. Today is the day to get that 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 um, that that drive back in you to push a little further and push a little longer and to understand that just because you're lonely in the flesh, God can fulfill the things in the spirit until He align that fleshly thing up with you. Because I'm a firm believer, is everybody for somebody? It's every everybody for somebody, but some of us gotta wait longer. Some of us got to wait longer. But why are you waiting? What are you doing? Are you waiting? Are you preparing yourself to be that wife? Why are you waiting, guys? Are you preparing yourself to be that husband? It's so easy to say, I want that husband, but we're not preparing to be a husband. It's so easy, ladies, to say, I want to be a wife, but we're not preparing to be a wife. It's so easy, but it's so hard to take time and prepare no matter how long it takes. And I believe instant gratification is one of our worst enemies. Instant gratification is one of our worst enemies. And I, and I once again, I get it. We're human. We're, we're in this natural flesh. But I encourage somebody. For those that get lonely. For those that may get lonely right after we we, we done with this, this prayer. I pray that you, you, you feel yourself back up. You, you keep filling yourself up. You keep filling yourself up. And I ain't saying to say go just extra crazy in the spirit because there's a balance with everything. But, but feed into your spirit. Feed into your spirit in spirit and in truth. A lot of us ain't speaking in spirit or in truth to begin with. And then we, we wonder why that some of our prayers ain't get, getting answered. We wonder why we're not getting released off some of these burdens when we get tempted, when we get to a point of just saying, you know what, I give up because we're not feeding it. We're not feeding it like we should. I encourage you on a day. Idle time is a devil playground, so feed. Feed your spirit and do something constructive. To not pass the time, but to, to, to get over the time that you're in. Because the devil comes in all type of ways, shapes, and forms. As soon as you, you get through one moment and you're feeling good, he may come right back. So this is the season that we got we to gotta step on this devil head. We got to step on this devil head for freedom. Last but not least, then we're going to pray. Last but not least. We thirst. We thirst. And this is why I even gave that story of um of the Samaritan woman. Samaritan woman. She had a natural thirst, right? She had a natural thirst. And Jesus had a natural thirst. Think about it, right? He had a long journey. And he sat at that well for a reason. Yes, he wanted to do some ministry, but he had a natural thirst. And she had a spiritual thirst. A lot of us have a, we just have a natural thirst. Why? Once again, we're human beings. We want to be loved by somebody. We want to be held by somebody. We want somebody to talk to us. And not just with words, but also with, with, with actions. I mean, with, with, that, with that, 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 that action. Like, you know what? Yes, I'm, I'm being attentive. Yes, I'm paying attention. Yes, not only you got to listen, but I'm going to go ahead and do the things that you said without you even asking. It's a natural thirst yes we are spiritual beings but we are so natural and we thirst a lot of us become these sad chicks and and for a guy a dip because we thirst a lot of us don't want to be like this yes um well, it ain't even about being lonely but a lot of us really thirst for for that feeling I mean, it's kind of like a half foot, for example, right? It's like a person getting half. They're chasing that, that first half. They get half, and then they keep getting high to chase that first half. It's like a thirst. 
it's kind of like an addiction in a sense because they're trying to chase a, 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 a feeling knowing that it's a possibility that never feel like that again. That's why the lady was talking to Jesus. That's why we, as believers, we talk to Jesus. Some of us have so much of a thirst in us that naturally it just can't be fulfilled no matter how hard we try. Some of us uh, slept with so many people in life and did so many nasty things and freaky things and, and, and things that will, will, will shame, you know, you look back on it like, I, I did all that? I mean, a lot of us. But we that thirst still wasn't fulfilled. Why? It's a natural thirst. And now this is a little bit more than sad chicks right now. Yes, I'm still on a sad chick, but this is a little bit more than sad chicks because we all got a thirst that we trying to quench. We all of them being exposed to something that that the, that that it, it consumed us, and we're constantly chasing after that th same thirst. But God, but God, and I come to learn, only God, only a connection, only an experience can quench that thirst. This is why Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, this is why Jesus had to go to, to Samaria. Because once again, the Jews, they weren't trying to go to Samaria. If anything, they go around Samaria. But Jesus had to go to Samaria to meet that sad chick. He had to go there because he knew that she was at a place that she didn't want to thirst no more. For those that I'm talking to right now, if you are at a place where you don't want to thirst no more, you got you to gotta go to your God. You got to get a relationship with your God. You got to find Jesus in this, in this whole, in everything that you're doing. And that's one great thing about ministry. That's one great thing about effective ministry. We find ourselves in God. That's why Jesus had to tell her about herself. He, want, he wanted her to know that he knew who she was. And in return, she had the chance to see herself. He said, no, you got a husband, but it ain't your husband. A lot of us got to see, see ourselves in God that, yes, I, I, I'm doing this. But I should not be doing this. It ain't right doing this. It's killing me doing this. It's taking time out my life doing this. I, I, I'm losing patience doing this. I'm losing myself doing this. I'm losing my identity doing this. We find ourselves through God. We find ourselves. It's an it's a image. It's like God throwing a mirror up in front of us saying this is you. If I'm saying these things and you hear these things and you see these things, this is for you. This is what effective ministry do. This is what being grounded in the word of God does. It allows you to see yourself, flaws and all, a, a whore or not, a, 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 a pimp or not. Well, whoever you are, you find yourself in yourself when you with God. That's what a real experience does. A real experience does. You find yourself. You're not going to lie to yourself. You're not going to deny the power within yourself that God is trying to exercise in you. You're not going to do it. Why? Because it's a tugging. It's a pulling. Why? Because you're thirsty. And I'm talking to those that's thirsty. I'm talking to those that, that do what they like but hate what they do because you're thirsty. You, you're tired of just the natural fulfillment of thirst. You're tired of just drinking water from the well. You're tired of just getting, getting, uh, getting doing whatever with that guy or you're doing whatever with that woman just to feel good for a moment. I'm talking to those that want more than that. I'm talking to those that want to be fulfilled complete, spiritually, mentally. Hallelujah. You find yourself in God. It's so many of us that like what we do but hate what we're doing. But once you start getting quenched, that your thirst start getting quenched, you understand even though I like it, it ain't the best for me. And then once you start getting closer to God, once you start realizing who God is, you realize that, you know what, this really ain't me. See, what, like, what Jesus was at the well with the, with the Samaritan woman, he knew that she was going there for something natural. He knew that she was going there for some natural water. But at the same time, he knew he knew her. 
and he knew that she was looking for some spiritual water. She, she knew, he knew that she ain't want to thirst like that no more. She, he knew that she got tired of being that side chick. She, he knew that she got tired of being abused. He knew that she got tired of once everything said and done, she still felt lonely. Once everything said and done, now she being all conflicted to a point where now the, the enemy is trying to speak to her and confuse her to a place of not caring. I'm here to tell somebody on the day. I'm here to tell somebody on the day. God sent me through Samaria on the day to say, if you're thirsty, go to God because he got what you need. Why? Because you got it already in you. God will meet you where you're at. If you're thirsty, if you're tired, he will supply your needs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who's thirsty on the day? Who's thirsty on the day? In spirit and in truth. Who thirsty on the day? You might not be no sad chick. You not, might not be no dip, but, but you're tired of the situation that you're in. You're thirsty for more because everything naturally that you've been doing, it ain't good enough or it's a temporary fix. It may do the job for a moment, but the next moment you're still the same way. You're still feeling the same things. You're still thinking the same things. You're still feeling empty. You're still feeling hopeless. You're still feeling lost. You're still feeling confused. Who I'm talking to on the day? Who thirsty out there? Well, I'm here to tell you, God is meeting you right where you at. God is beating you right where you at. If God is allowing you to see yourself in this message, God is meeting you right where you at to quench your thirst. To quench your thirst. But you got to do it in spirit and in truth. Forget religion. Forget all these made up things. Come to your God. Your God. In spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Father God, I come right now to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for the word, God. Thank you for your word being a living word, God. Thank you for your word being a sustaining word, God. Thank you for your word being a word that speaks to generations, God. Thank you for your word being an on-time word at a time like this, in a season like this, in a pandemic like this, Father God. Thank you for allowing your word to change somebody's heart, God, to change somebody's mind, God, because now they can see themselves a little bit clearer in you, God. They can understand that they ain't got to thirst no more, God. They can understand that they ain't got to be like this no more, God. They can understand that they got power in you, God. So I pray. I pray that we thirst for more. I pray that we thirst for more, more righteous, God. I pray that we thirst for more righteous. I pray that we thirst for a, a more of a relationship with you, God. I pray that we thirst for more of a, 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 of, a, of a communication with you, God. I pray that we thirst for more intimacy in you, God. I pray that we thirst for more inside of us to grow, God. I pray that the things that's been hindering us and holding us back, God, and keeping us bound, God, keeping us in change, God. I pray that we thirst to get out these things, God. I pray that we thirst for it. That's the only way to work if we thirst for it, God. I pray that we can thirst for more, more of you. I pray that we can thirst for more of, of the things inside of us, our gifts, our talents. I pray that we can thirst for more spiritual, a spiritual life, God, because the natural life can do a number on us. It can have us go swaying side to side, God. So I pray for that, that stability that the spirit can do, God, that can give us understanding, that can give us clarity, that can give us discernment, God. Because truth be told, a lot of us looking for husband and wives. We don't know who to trust. We don't know who lying. We don't know who's trying to play us, deceive us, hurt us. We don't know a lot. So I pray for your spirit. I pray that we can live and walk in spirit and in truth. So we don't trap ourselves and delay ourselves. Hallelujah. Because a lot of us can't take another thing. A lot of us can't take another heartbreak. A lot of us can't take another deception. So I pray. I pray that we can thirst for more. More of you. Father God, I pray that we can lay it all on, all on the altar on tonight, God. 
I pray that we can lay it on an altar tonight, God. I pray that we can lay it in front of you in spirit and in truth and give you something to work with, Father God. You want to meet us there, Father God. So I pray for those that's, that's hesitant, for those that want to want to move forward in you, but, but they're not. For those that want to give it all to you, but they feel like they can't. I pray that we can lay it on an altar in spirit and in truth. All of our troubles, all of our burdens, all of our anxieties, all of our stress, all of our concerns. I pray that we can lay it all on an altar on tonight. Because you're meeting us in this moment. You're meeting us at a time like this, God. So I pray. I pray that we, we come to you and lay it all on an altar. As only as only you can be the be the be the, the essence. You can be the one. You can be the, you, 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 you are the worship leader. Hallelujah. I, I pray that we can, we can understand your glory. We can understand your, 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 your spirit of who you really are and what you about. So we can stop being hesitant. So we can stop quitting. So we can stop giving up. So we can stop delaying the process. I pray that we can lay it on the altar. Yes, I'm a sinner. Yes, I do this. Yes, I have trouble with this. Yes, 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 everything, God. I pray that we just lay it all on the altar on the night. Whatever's holding us back from greatness, from freedom, I pray. And I want to thank you in advance. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I want to thank you in advance for what's to come. Hallelujah. I thank you for victory. I thank you for victory in the mighty name of Yahshua. I thank you for what's to come. I thank you for open doors. I thank you for new relationships. I thank you for healthy relationships. I thank you for, for those that has been a, that have been a sad chick and for those guys that have been a dip. I pray that they see themselves through this message. I thank you in advance for the change that's going to come with them and with the promises that comes with change. So I, I thank you in advance for the households that's going to start being mended. For the households, for the, for the husbands can look at their wife like it was the first time. For the wives can look, look at their husband like it was the first time. For those that's, that's seeking marriage, that desire marriage, that they can see themselves for the first time like it was the first time. I thank you in advance. I thank you that this pandemic will soon be over. At least for the kingdom. The world going to do what the world going to do. Why? Because it's a system. It's systematic. It, 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 it plans, plot, and strategize our, to, to devour us. But for us kingdom citizens, for those that walks in spirit and in truth, for those that walks with the power of Christ, I thank you in advance for change. Hallelujah. For a new normal, a new day, a new moment, a new perspective. A new way to walk it, a new way to talk it, a new a new way to, to process it. Hallelujah. We thank you. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Hey, I love you guys. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I mean, God is good. God is awesome. And I pray that God shows you your cell phone today. If you're in that situation or you're not, if you know somebody that's in that situation or whatever, or if you're in any situation that's holding you back. Because some of us, we got to start back here. I know life did a number on you. I know it. I get it. I've been a part of it. Life did a number on me. But it was, it was a time where I had, to stop, I had to start caring. Because I felt myself being buried under my own self by not caring. You got to care about something, at least care about yourself and don't, don't, yes, I, I know, I know it's a, I know what, what people do now. I get it. I, I know some people ain't going to change. I get it. I know people getting ready, right? Some people are getting ready right now to go meet. They, they sad to you or, or they did whatever. I know it. But for those that's thirsty, for those that's thirsty in the spirit, I pray that you start caring. I pray the times you get lonely, you you, you 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 don't feed that loneliness, but you 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 feed that that spirit man. 
you feed that spirit man, you pick up a book, you listen to a song, and you fight that idle time. You do something constructive. And last but not least, we all thirst. I'm naturally thirsty now because I've been talking for an hour. But the, the, the thirst in the spirit, it, it drives me. The thirst in the spirits, it just keeps me going, keep me flowing. Why? Because at last, I'm going to get thirsty again. On a natural, but the spirit, this will sustain me. And I pray that this spirit sustain you. Hey, I love you guys. God bless. Affect your day. Don't let your day affect you.